Now, at least in the United States, and probably here as well, average life expectancy is about 10 years less than that. And why is that? Because many of us still smoke, we don't exercise, obesity is especially a problem in the United States, and many, too many people smoke. So, what I want to actually work with you now to do a little life expectancy test with all of you thinking about these major factors. So what you need to do is get out a piece of paper and a pencil. Paper and pencil. Okay. So, if you are a man, I want you to write 86 at the top of your piece of paper. Okay, 86 years is about what a man should probably on average be able to achieve. Okay, if you're a woman, you get to write 89. All right, now we're going to go through A, G, E, I, N, G, six questions. And now we're, and we'll find out exactly how old you're going to live to be. Okay? I say that with a little jest, but I think it's very important as you go through this, we're going to see how your health-related behaviors affect you on a day-to-day -day basis. It really is important. Okay, the first one is attitude. That's the, I have this acronym of aging, A-G-E-I-N-G, and the first one is attitude. And what's going to happen is after I tell you a question, you're going to either be adding years or subtracting years from that number I just gave you, okay? So as I said, the centenarians, they seem to manage stress well. Their kids manage stress well. In fact, we did personality testing on the children. And it's, it, uh, we published this recently in a journal called the Journal of American Geriatric Society, and we found that the children tend to score very low in one feature of personality testing called neuroticism. This means that they don't dwell on things. They don't internalize things that would be stressful. They're able to let go. And, this, and again, it's not so much the amount of stress in your life that counts, it's how you manage it that's so incredibly important. And if you don't have the personality for it, there are certainly things all of us know that seem to decrease the effect of stress, whether it be Tai Chi or yoga or meditation or physical exercise or knowing when to just take a deep breath every now and then. But it's important to figure out taking the time to set aside to manage your stress. Now, if you have the personality or the makeup or don't do things that just naturally internalizes the stress, every, when you feel stress it just goes right into you, you're not able to let go, I want you to take five years off, put a minus five down there next to stress. If on the other hand, if you do seem to manage your stress well, it doesn't really get to you, um, you do various things that seem to manage it well, then just stay where you are. Stay at that nice high number, okay? The next one is G. This is genetics. And in this case, we know that exceptional longevity runs very strongly in families, and it seems to be a wonderful advantage. And maybe much of that is genes that we're looking into. This is what makes the difference between living to 90 and maybe living up 15 years beyond that. So if you, it's very hard to gauge this, but I tell people, if you have somebody around 95 in your family, parents, aunts, uncles, a grandparent, here's the biggie, you get to add 10 years. So put a plus 10, okay? Now, if you don't have that kind of longevity, even just one person in your family, um, then you just stay where you are because that's kind of what we're all built for is just stay where you are. You haven't gotten that longevity advantage, okay? The next one, E. This one is you can anticipate. It's exercise. Um, it's, maybe that's exercicio in Portuguese. There you go. Um, now, with exercise, what I ask is 30 minutes a day. And part of the issue is just dedicating the 30 minutes a day. That's the obstacle. Once you've said, okay, I'm going to exercise for 30 minutes, 
you're halfway there and then you go do it, okay? That could be the running that Hannah and I went on this morning, or it, what it's interesting is as we get older, what becomes more and more important is the strength training and maintaining muscle. Because it, unfortunately, as we get older, it seems easier to just lose that muscle. And muscle is a very important burner of fat, but very interestingly, it's also somewhat of an endocrine organ. organ. It produces some very important substances that can do things as strange as help your cognitive function, help decrease the risk for depression. So muscle is very important, it helps people not fall as much, helps people sleep. So at least devoting, I would say, three times a week to that strength training. We saw the ladies doing the barbells in the pool and they were doing aerobic exercise at the same time. That looked like fantastic exercise to me. So 30 minutes of exercise. If you do 30 minutes of exercise a day, you stay where you are. You actually don't add anything. And the way I look at it that way is pretend you're a car and you're built to go, what would be, 160,000 kilom 160, kilometers, okay, as far as how far a car can go. Well, what's going to make that car able to do that is changing the oil every 3,000 miles. It's that maintenance, it's that exercise, it's the muscle building. Now, if on the other hand, you don't exercise, if you give the car to your 16-year-old and they're running around going very fast and they're bumping into things and they're not changing the oil, if you're not doing the exercise 30 minutes a day, you take off five years, give yourself a minus five. And again, these are very ballpark. Next thing. And that is the eye, that's interest. This is not muscle building, this is brain building. Do things on a regular basis that help build your brain. And what I call doing things that are novel and complex. So you do things that are difficult and you do things that are new to you. Now, for some people, that could be these word puzzles or number puzzles like the Sudoku. Um, you could do, um, the most powerful stuff would be learning a new language. I need to go learn Portuguese. Or learning a new musical instrument. Those are the real tough ones. Now, what does this do? This builds new connections between different parts of the brain, between the brain cells, new tracks of communication. So if you build all these new tracks, if there is some kind of memory loss in your future, or even a terrible disease like Alzheimer's disease, there has to be more damage done now to snip away at those new tracks before you see a clinical problem. And so maybe doing these novel and complex things actually builds up what we call cognitive reserve and maybe decreases your risk for some of these problems down the road. If you do that kind of stuff, come to lectures like this all the time, then you get to add five years. You've actually built up some kind of reserve that wouldn't have been there otherwise. So you actually get to add something there. Okay, we're almost done. The, last th the second to last thing is nutrition. Okay, in that case, I want you to have a weight that feels healthy. You need a diet that's conducive to a healthy weight. I don't come up with a specific number. Most of us know when we have a weight where we feel good, where when we exercise, it's not slowing us down, we're not overtired and we feel vibrant and we feel like we're at a really healthy weight. So we don't come up with a number. And for some older women, that can actually mean being quite stocky. And we've actually seen semi-overweight women who have markedly reduced rates of, say, osteoporosis or a tendency to fracture bone as we get older, which is a terrible disease, but maybe being a little stocky for a woman makes uh, good sense in that situation. So a healthy weight. If you're at a healthy weight, then you stay where you are. I know you want to keep adding stuff, but don't have that chance here. If on the other hand, you feel like you have a diet and lack of exercise that's conducive to maintaining being overweight, then you have to take off five years. You put a minus five. Okay, last but not least, and I saw a few of you out in the lobby doing this, which was very upsetting, but you don't want to smoke. And if you smoke, and I won't let you get away with a cigarette a day, if you smoke a cigarette a day or more, you have to take off 15. Yeah. 
Okay. And uh, I'm going to be the first as a, uh, yeah, okay. I'm going to be the first to admit that Americans and the smoking industry have a great deal to blame for this in terms of how they have completely deceived the world population in terms of just how bad smoking is for you. Uh, first it was the movies showing how glamour it, what glamorous it was and there were no side effects or problems. But smoking related illnesses are by far and away the number one preventable illness, whether it be in Brazil or America. And it's devastating. You're not living into your 80s. People with smoking related illnesses, they die in their 70s or earlier. And they have a long period of disability before that. 